Sorry again. I <coughs> I lied. It worked as a chain maker from Cradley Heath for 20 years. And all the time he'd been there working, his neighbour, Anok, had been on the door. Well, and I was fed up with it because it seemed that Anok had got a better life than him. And I mean, you know, when Eli was on uh, early's in the morning, he'd, he'd, he'd be pushing his bike down the entry in the winter, you know, at half past five in the morning. Anok was there, tucked up in bed for a few hours. In the summer, when he was on afternoons, you know, he'd be going off to work in a hot uh, furnace, you know, and there was Anok down the garden. Looking out for his pigeons, and I thought, ah, oh, I've had enough of this, you know. I'm going to go on the road. But it wasn't that easy then in them days. So, I mean, he couldn't just pack his job in because they wouldn't give him any money, so he thought, I've got to lose my job first. So that week, first job they give him, he cut all the billets off short. So when he made the chains, they didn't quite touch, so they just fell apart. Second job they gave him, he put the, the wrong tool in the Oliver. So they, instead of being nice and round, they were all funny shapes like that, you know. So when they put the chain together, it all tied itself up in knots. Totally useless. Well, the gaffer come to him on Friday, he says, Hey, Eli, he says, you've worked for me a long time, and you're my best chain maker, but this week you've cost me a fortune, and I can't cope with it, he says, I'm going to give you a car to go let you go. <laughs> so, Monday morning, he's on his bike, going down the Labour Exchange. Well, as he went down through Cradley, there at every chain shop, there was making says, you know, chain makers wanted it all. I'm going to have to all here, because you see, what they used to do was give you a green card, and if you've got a green card, you've got to go for the interview. And uh, if you don't, you've got no money. So in he went to the Labour Exchange and uh, oh, got behind the counter and says, Trade. He says, Lion Tamer. <laughs> <laughs> he says, Well, that's a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> he says, We happen to have a, a vacancy for a Lion Tamer. He says, We've got a circus in town. And <laughs> there's been a, a bit of an accident or something, you know. <laughs> Don't know the details, but never mind. So he gave him the green card. He said, get off. So he, off he goes up to the circus. And there's a ringmaster, you know. So he, he gives him the green card. He says, uh, oh, you're experienced? And he says, well, no, I wouldn't say that. <coughs> he, says, oh. he, says, oh. he says, don't worry. He says, because we can do on-job training. We can train you. You know, we can, you can learn as you go along. He says, anyway, he says, see him over there, and in this cage there was this lion, and he was pacing up and down. And he looked very happy. And I says, he don't look very happy. He said, well, no, he ain't had his breakfast yet. He says, but, he says, what you've got to do, he says, now, first thing you've got to do is show him who's gaffer. He says, you've got to get his respect. He says, oh, this is how you do it so well. You see that there, there's a big lump of meat. He says, that's his breakfast. He says, now what you're going to do, you're going to throw that over the bars of the cage, and he, you know, that will preoccupy him. He'll be content with his oh. He says, and then, while he's, the, you know, involved with that, he says, see that little door there inside the cage? I said, you will let yourself in through here, but make sure you shut the door behind you and lock it. And I said, oh, he says, he says and then, he said, well, well, he said, no, nah, he'll be, you know, that interest in his breakfast, he won't notice you. So you walk up quietly behind him, and he'll grab that chunk of meat off him. He said, well, well, he said, oh, he said, well, be very happy, but you've got to show him who's gaffer. <coughs> he says, <coughs> and then you start to walk slowly backwards. He said, well, he says, oh, he'll start to come. You know, he says, walk backwards. Tell him you've got your back against the wall. He said, he can't, he can't get behind you then. He said, no. he said, but he, he, he was he just hang on to that, but keep looking at him, keep staring him right in the eye. He says, and, he, he says, and then you'll notice, 
you just go down, you'll be ready to pounce. And wait for that moment, and just when he goes to pounce, you reach down on the floor and grab a big armful of crap and throw it straight in his eyes. He said, well, what about if there ain't no crap on the floor? No <laughs> 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 Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story that sort of links the last one with this one. And <laughs> Have any, any heard of uh, Lou Foley, a.k.a. Yeah. the Lion Man from Game of oh. <laughs> Well, <laughs> when you used to drive past his house, he got these lions in the, in the garden, and you could see them through the, the wrought iron gates. There was the lion pedestrians up as they walked up and down, you know. Anyway, one Saturday morning, he got this lion. He, he wore fully grown, but he was a big, he was a big animal. He put him on a lead like a dog and took him for a walk down Great Heath Road. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were people leaping off the pavement under the wheels of buses, you know. Well, he got to this pub. He got to this pub. And he poked his head through the door and says to the lion, he said, Hey, Gaffrey, he said, it's all right if I bring a lion in here. Well, he got them like he'd crowd his head and he was having a good laugh. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> anyway, the landlord says, You can bring a gorilla in if you want. So in he went with this lion. Anyway, there was, there was a big queue for the outside toilet. <laughs> anyway, 